I'm going to take you to Matthew chapter 2. And we're going to think about the arrival of wise men from the East. These are very well-known verses. What is sometimes misunderstood is that this is most likely two years after the birth of Christ. And if you do your chronology, it would look as if they have left Bethlehem, gone back to Nazareth, come back to Bethlehem, and we're going to see at the end of this little incident, they go down to Egypt, and then when the danger has passed, they look as if they're coming back to Bethlehem, but they're diverted to Nazareth. Because all of these scriptures, here's the amazing thing. God had said in Hosea, out of Egypt I have called my son. How on earth would the son of God be born in Bethlehem yet come out of Egypt? God works it all out. But read with me in Matthew chapter 2. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And it may be that the star had appeared at the very date of his birth that was directing them to Bethlehem. Well, of course, they don't go to Bethlehem, do they? They come from the east to Jerusalem and they ask the question, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Now, we're not given any background. We're just told that they saw his star and that they recognised the significance and they came to worship him. Now, this is very significant because they don't worship Mary. They worship him. Well, I, I don't want to go through the whole detail of this. It's very interesting, but you know the story well. Herod hears about this. They don't come to the palace initially. They're in Jerusalem and Herod hears about these things and, and he's troubled and Jerusalem is agitated. A king? Who is this? A king? And what Herod does is he gets the chief priests and the scribes, the, 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 the intelligentsia, the, the religious leaders, he gets them together. He demands of them where Christ should be born. Well, if they knew their Bibles, they would have answered straight away. I don't know whether they did, but they tell him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it's written by the prophet. And so they, they, they come to Micah and they discover that it predicts the king, Messiah, would be born in Bethlehem. Well, Herod, he invites the wise men to the palace. He calls them. He inquires of them. Diligent. He's very careful. He does this in private. He, he inquires very carefully. He's very specific. You know, he's probably having someone taking notes of exact details. When it happened. What time the star appeared. And he sends them to Bethlehem. And he tells them to go and search diligently for the young child. And, well, here's his hypocrisy. He says, when you found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. Well, they hear the king, they depart. The star then moves and takes them to Bethlehem. Stops over the house. And they're rejoicing with great joy because there's always rejoicing when God guides and you follow his guidance and, and you're directed. Now it says when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. I want you to notice here they saw the young child, it wasn't the baby. So that's one reason why I think it was possibly two years. The other reason is Herod inquires about the time the star appears. I'll come back to their gifts in a moment, but we do notice, don't we, that when Herod discovers they don't come back to tell him he's angry and he, he decides to destroy every child of two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. That's verse 16. So he works out there must be two years is the time limit between their travelling and the age of this child. So it may be that the star appeared at the birth and therefore he's two years old and there's that tragic fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah of Rachel weeping for his children now two more things just as I finish they worship him and open their treasures and they give them gold frankincense and myrrh and you know what they speak of but let me just remind you the gold would remind me of the glorious deity and majesty and richness of this one it also might be the means of survival for Mary and Joseph and the child as they travel to Egypt frankincense a fragrance that people would use 
not every day, but in daily special events. It's a fragrance of life. What a beautiful life the Lord Jesus lived. The myrrh. It's not something you'd use every day. You'd anoint a body when someone died. It's a fragrance of death. And depicted in the three gifts are something of the person, the life and work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what happens? Well, they, they, they war they're warned by God in a dream not to go to Herod. So they go back another way to their own country. And then Joseph is a man of dreams, just like the Joseph of the Old Testament. The Lord appears to Joseph and he says, take the child, flee into Egypt. And they go to Egypt, fulfilling Hosea's prophecy. Out of Egypt have I called my son. God is protecting his son. The seed of the woman will one day crush the serpent's head. But the serpent, the devil, will consistently seek to attack and destroy the seed of the woman, enmity, because he wants to destroy Messiah, the prince. But little does he know that one day he will be destroyed by Messiah, the prince, because he's going to be Jesus, Jehovah, the saviour. And he's going to crush the serpent's head. And we've come full circle from Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman, to the fulfilment in the death of Christ. May God give us a heart of worship and appreciation for the lovely person of the Lord Jesus.